If you're heading to Florence, you should know that a good mix of fun activities will improve your experience and lead to long-term shared memories with your travel companions. Planning structured activities is what we believe makes trips really memorable. Planning a trip to Florence soon? We have you covered. Here are the top things that you should do while in Florence. If you haven't already, definitely check out our blog, which has a dedicated page to Florence, including tons of content on the most popular village in Italy. I'm talking where to stay, where to eat, top things to do, top tours, everything. Number one, see the greatest sculpture on earth. Known officially as Galleria dell'Accademia di Firenze, Accademia is a small art museum with Michelangelo's David as its focal point. Unlike its rival, the Uffizi Gallery, Academia is based around one sculpture and a few works of art, which makes it unique. Michelangelo sculpted David from a block of marble abandoned by other artists, describing it as unusable. Michelangelo not only was able to work with that block of marble, but he sculpted what is arguably his masterpiece, which equates to the greatest sculpture ever brought to life. He famously described David as trapped in the marble, which is a very humble way to describe sculpting. We offer a guided tour of Florence that includes a stop in Academia, as well as the tickets to get inside, and it also hits a few other stops in Florence, including Ponte Vecchio, the Duomo, the Bronze Doors, and Il Porcellino, plus more. Number two, take a tour of the Uffizi Gallery. The Uffizi Gallery is Florence's premier art gallery and one of the greatest collections of Italian Renaissance artwork on earth. The name Uffizi translates to offices, which is its original purpose. Built in the 16th century as an office building for the Medici and formally declared a museum open to the public in 1865. Over 4 million visitors enter the Uffizi each year, which makes it the most ticketed attraction in Florence. Why? The Renaissance, by definition, gave birth to a new era of art, architecture, and culture. Florence birthed the Renaissance, and much of the artwork is in the galleries of the Uffizi. The structure, designed by Giorgio Vasari, saw its completion in 1581 for the Medici family. Today, you can see some of the world's greatest Renaissance artwork, including The Birth of Venus and La Primavera by Sandro Botticelli. This is a must-visit site for visitors to Florence, and we recommend a guided tour of the Uffizi to bring the museum to life. Check out the link in the description below to see our tours of the Uffizi. Number three, walk across the Ponte Vecchio. The Ponte Vecchio is an excellent example of a medieval bridge and what an impressive structure it is. The construction is completely from stone archways that support the weight of the bridge, its visitors, and the shops. The shops built on either side of the bridge add to its uniqueness, but few realize that there is a secret passage for the Medici built on top known as the Vasari Corridor. This tunnel, this, this hallway, a corridor, that's a kilometer long from their house in the air all the way to, to the Uffizi, which is like, yeah, I mean, imagine building an overground bridge to your office, you know? Interessante. Interessante. The bridge is occupied by jewelers and generally overrun by visitors looking to purchase something from on top of the Ponte Vecchio in Florence, which I admit is pretty cool to say. The jewelers are not there by accident either. The bridge used to be inhabited by farmers and butchers of all sorts, but the Medici propagated the idea that these types of shops make the bridge and city look fit for peasants. The farmers were forced out, which eventually turned into a decree in 1595, excluding them from doing business on the bridge. Our tour of Academia, also featured below, includes a visit to Ponte Vecchio if you want to hear its history from a passionate local guide. Number four, the Gates of Paradise, You'll find the famous baptistry doors of Florence attached to the baptistry of St. John in Florence. The baptistry is directly in front of the Florence Cathedral, Il Duomo. It is so close to the cathedral and has such a similar design that it appears to be the same structure, but it's a church of its own and considered a minor basilica. The structure is one of the oldest in Florence dating back to the 11th century. The building is famous for its bronze doors designed and constructed by Lorenzo Gilberti over 27 years. Michelangelo described the doors as the gates to paradise, which is what the doors are known as today. Vasari, one of Florence's greatest artists and art critics, described them in his book, The Lives of the Artists, as undeniably perfect in every way and must rank as the finest masterpiece ever created. 
Gilberti innovated with new uses of space. The doors are considered a masterpiece that helped define the Renaissance, and they also draw so many visitors today. As always, we have tours that include these, so if you're interested in seeing them with a guide who's going to make them come alive, check out the description for some links below. Number 5. See the Duomo and Brunelleschi's Dome The Florence Cathedral is a must-see attraction, and it will be very difficult to miss it if you're visiting the city. It is located in the center of town and visible from much of the city. You basically will see it multiple times a day as you walk around. It is named, officially, the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore. The name, Santa Maria del Fiore, is seldom used in Italy, however. Most would simply refer to it as Il Duomo. The Duomo is designed in a very Tuscan, Florentine style, green and white marble that brings to life its facade and surfaces. It differs greatly from the Basilica of Rome in many ways. One is that it was completely detached from other buildings so you can walk around it 360 degrees. The dome, its literal crowning jewel, was the first of its magnitude since the Pantheon. Many thought that it would be unable to be done, but the Medici family pressed on and Filippo Brunelleschi brought the realization. By far, the most famous moment in the cathedral's history is the murder of Giuliano di Medici on Easter Sunday, April 26, 1478 by the Pazzi family. They were attempting to dethrone the Medici from power and failed. The idea was to murder both Giuliano di Medici and Lorenzo the Great, but they failed to kill Lorenzo and were banished from Florence forever. We definitely have some incredible tours that include the Florence Duomo, so check out the description below for some links. Number 6. Dine at Mercato Centrale Mercato Centrale, as you may have guessed, is the central market of Florence. It is a mixed mash of things from panino places to butchers and even beeswax. The complex consists of two floors which are night and day in appearance. The first floor is a local market with traditional Italian style vendors. Here is where you'll find all types of Italian produce, meats, and even Osteria style restaurants. The second floor you'll go from the 16th century Medici to the 21st century by going up an escalator. Welcome to the types of places that the current Italian youth enjoys. Modern and cool. Yes, it is great for Westerners to go to Italy and feel a connection to the past, but trust me, Italians appreciate modern touches, and the second floor is exactly that. This feels like a really cool market that you might find in a big city like New York City, but you're in the middle of Florence, and all the food is cooked by Italians, which makes it even better. Surrounding Mercato Centrale are the cover markets, which are really touristy and cheap. While there are some decent items in these markets, I mostly avoid them. That said, if you've never been to Europe and seen the outdoor markets, it is a cool experience to check out, but keep your wallet in a safe place in every sense of the word. Do you consider yourself a daring person? If so, find a great Lamparota stand and have a sandwich prepared out of the fourth stomach of a cow. How would anyone even think up this dish? Imagine you are a poor farmer and you want to provide for your family. You've invested in a cow and want to get the most from it. Being the marketing genius farmer you are, you start experimenting with dishes using less desirable parts of the animal to increase your yield per animal. The result is Lampredotto. Okay, so this may not have happened exactly like that, but you get the point. Lampredotto is likely the product of trying to get the most out of each animal to feed the general population in times where wealth and food were not in abundance. Today, it is a local favorite and a definite street food, commonly served as a sandwich. Some say Lampredotto is delicious and others cringe at its sight. You'll only know once you try it. We recommend getting it at Chiosco del Lampredotto, where we've had it ourselves. You can see a link below. The Bisteca Fiorentina is what it sounds like, a Florentine steak. The cut of meat can be veal or from a heifer cattle, which is the cow that has not yet birthed the calf. Furthermore, it must be taken from the Chanina breed of cattle that have origins in Siena. Before ordering this steak, you should know it is commonly served rare. Like most Italian recipes, there is no fancy marinade to bring flavor to the dish. The flavor comes from the high quality cut of meat and the salt brings that flavor forward. Again, a link to our food tour where you can try the Bisteca Fiorentina is in the description below. The Vespa is synonymous with Italy as pizza, Michelangelo, and gondolas, which means you'll be doing yourself a disservice by not riding one. There are two ways to achieve this. First, get picked up by an Italian player, quote unquote, 
with a Vespa or join a Vespa tour. We recommend the Vespa tour. Luckily, Florence is a really cool but small town. You won't realize until you get there, but one second you're in the middle of what feels like a bustling town and the next minute you're surrounded by vineyards. One of our partners in Florence runs a super memorable tour that not only allows you to cruise around quiet back roads on a Vespa, but also stops at vineyards and small towns along the way. Definitely check out our tours of Tuscany by Vespa. Vernaccia is made quite simply after the grape it is produced from. It is grown and produced most commonly near San Gimignano in Tuscany since the Renaissance. Vernaccia is normally a strong wine with a bouquet of saffron, flower, and honey. It is a powerful grape with a distinctive flavor that locals love. Where should you get Vernaccia? Just about any restaurant in Florence will have it, but we also have a small group day trip to Chianti that goes to Siena, San Gimignano, and a vineyard in Chianti for lunch. Vernaccia is definitely on the menu. See all of our Tuscany wine tours and you'll see a link in the description. Have you ever seen one of those incredible pictures of Florence and the Duomo and wonder where it came from? The answer is Piazzale Michelangelo, named after the famed Renaissance sculptor himself with a replica of David out of bronze in the center. You can definitely enjoy this view during the day, but if the conditions are right, you will see one of the world's best sunsets in the evening. Absorb the Brancacci Chapel. While it's definitely not a museum, the Brancacci Chapel is one of those places you walk into and immediately understand you are somewhere important. A silk merchant, financially responsible for its creation, Felice Brancacci, lends his name to the chapel. If the chapel is located inside the Vatican Museums, it would likely see millions of visitors per year to the likes of the Sistine Chapel. It is actually referred to as the Sistine Chapel of the early Renaissance. While it's not a Florence museum, it is influential, important, and on the top of the list of our recommendations. While Brancacci gets the credit in his name for the chapel's existence, the artist responsible for making it what it is is known simply by the name Masaccio. Masaccio is a painter that most people won't reference to in a conversation today when talking about Italian art, but Michelangelo and da Vinci would have mentioned his name on a daily basis. Santo Spirito is a lively district of Florence which is home to shops, restaurants, and some pretty cool places to wet your beak. No trip to Florence is complete without visiting this area, especially since it's home to the famed Palace of the Medici Dynasty. While this is definitely a bucket list item in Florence, this cheeky little bullet point is all about getting a meal and drinks while in the area. I highly recommend Gurdulu Gastronomia for a meal if you want unique dishes. and Osteria Cinghiali Bianco for the classics. I also heavily recommend reserving in advance at La Loggia Rooftop Bar for some refreshing libations. Cinque Terre, one of Italy's most celebrated and no longer hidden treasures, is just about a 2.5 hour journey from Florence. This makes it a great day trip option, although we recommend spending a night or two there. That said, vacation time has its limits, and Italy has many things you'll want to see. If you are unfamiliar, Cinque Terre consists of five principal towns and a few extra smaller towns that are connected by one road, a train, and lots and lots of hiking trails. The area is quaint, colorful, and as natural as it gets. Italy has abundant laws protecting the area to preserve its original charm, which is why so many people want to come and visit. It is a blast from the past. You can stay here for a few days, in which case, take a look at our article on where to stay in Cinque Terre. If not, you can cruise out here for the day on our Florence to Cinque Terre day trip. You can find a link to our where to stay article and the Florence to Cinque Terre day trip in the description of this video alongside of many other items that you might want to take a look at. The Leaning Tower of Pisa is a beautiful structure that would likely be famous even if the foundation had been poured correctly, but the fact that it was built incorrectly makes it a must-see attraction. 
The tower leans 5.5 degrees, or about 15 feet according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, and thanks to some restoration projects in 1999, it may never fall. The tower takes its name after its hometown, Pisa, which is just over an hour from Florence by train and car. If you are just going to the tower, the train works and you can take a taxi from the train station to the tower. You'll have to reserve a ticket a few weeks in advance if you want to climb the tower, which is something I recommend doing. If you want to streamline the day, we have a great day trip from Florence to Pisa that includes transportation and tickets. Pisa is only about a four hour stop, so our trip includes other options like Vinci or Luca. Definitely look at our website and you can check out all of our tours to Pisa. There's a few different options. All of them are amazing. Il Porcellino is in Mercato Nuovo, and it's a bronze copy of a bronze copy of a Roman copy of a Greek bronze statue of a wild boar. The Medici family procured the Roman marble copy in the 17th century, and they or another family commissioned Pietro Tacca to create a bronze copy of the statue and turn it into a fountain. The fountain was very popular, and like many fountains, it has been surrounded by superstition. For such a small monument, it's hard to believe, but Amongst locals, this is a top Florence attraction. Rubbing the boar's nose has very little to do with the tradition, but is now almost compulsory to get the boar kind of ready for what's next. You should put a coin in the boar's mouth and let it roll off its tongue into the water below. There is a very fine grate over the water system, and if the coin falls through, it brings good fortune. We run a few different tours in Florence that include the bronze boar, so definitely check them out. This is just one of those sites that most people overlook when they visit Florence. It is perched up on one of the highest points of the city, so the views are amazing. If you're going to visit Piazzale Michelangelo for an epic view, I highly recommend you go a bit higher and see the amazing abbey. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the like button. Don't forget to subscribe because we're still traveling and covering more cool cities as we go. And the bell is the most important part because it actually delivers the video to you when it's published. Otherwise, enjoy your trip to Florence. Arrivederci.